welcome to this week's Rugby League Bat Chat from the LD Nutrition Stadium in Featherstone. Challenge Cup fever is upon us, but we have much, much more to talk about this week. Joining us to speak all things Rugby League are Giants legend Earl Crabtree, leading player agent Craig Harrison and Leeds Rhinos hooker Sean Lunt. Gents, welcome. It's uh, We will go on to the Challenge Cup, I promise, but Earl and Sean with you here. We've got to talk about relegation first, haven't we? Um, Earl, I'll start with you. Huddersfield. Cheers, um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> 24 0 uh, against Castleford. Mm. Second time you've been nilled in two games. What's what's going on? I think quite a lot at the moment. Um, a, a team with absolutely zero confidence by the looks of it, and um, trying to find a way out of trouble, but uh, not getting anywhere very fast. And um, we're in a tough position now. And I think we've been talking about other teams not losing or losing games. London, for instance, I think there's too much talk about London uh, not winning a game for the rest of the season. They're winning games, they're playing for each other and they'll probably pick up another win before the end of the season. Huddersfield, we don't look like we could at the moment. Something has to change. It has to change dramatically. We need to find a way to win. It's not about performance anymore. Nobody really cares about how well you play. It's about getting two points, but we can't even jag a try. Two games at home where we haven't mm. scored a point. That, that just shouldn't happen, mm. even with a little bit of luck going your way, but nothing's going our way, but I don't think we deserved it. Mm. Um, very, very disappointed, and it's hard to see where the tries have come from, individual performances, drop balls. Um, it, it's tough at the moment, the lads are doing it tough. I, mm. I believe they are trying, um, but it's, it's just not good enough, and um, we need to start scoring some points. Go I'm going to jump in there, because mm. I, I, I got on Twitter last night and did a little bit of... Um, you had four of my lads I've got under 19s playing it. And I'm saying to people, look, these are not your problem. You had seven players under 21, that's not your problem. It's them in stance and we're not playing. Or we'll be a big on cap. But I don't know if fans understand it. I actually were trying to say, these young lads are going to be the future of your club. They shouldn't even be in this position, let's be honest. They shouldn't be playing. If the cap's right, kids shouldn't be playing with three games to go to save a club from relegation. They should be out of way and, and thinking. So my, my point is... And, and what's happening within that? I don't get. You must have six hundred grand on cap in the stand. So that's that. From where I'm looking, thinking the fans should appreciate what these youngs are doing, because these are going to. If, if they do go down, and that's mm. for God's sake, they don't. If they did, these are the ones who will build the club back up. Mm. I was in the same because most of the big cap lads will be off like a shot. Two thousand. I was in in the same position. I was as I, I was relegated at eighteen years old. Yeah. I played five games in the relegation mm. season. Do you know? And uh, Tony Smith gave me the opportunity because he knew that was the case. He brought me off the bench, gave me an introduction mm. into Super League, got me head taken off a few times. We got relegated, and he brought me through. And that's mm. how it worked because I would just dropped in just to play a few mm. games just to see how I went to, you know, build me up for the future. We're now actually putting these young lads in for the full season. They jumped in last season and played like 10 games each when they shouldn't have done really, should have only played one, two, three, four games. That's what you do with these players. Then you build them up. We've just had to get them and go, look, you're a Super League player. From being 17, 18 year old, you are now suddenly a Super League player. It doesn't work like that. It takes years of development, physically, mentally, emotionally. You imagine putting like your seventeen-year-old kid out there, just going here well, you go. The nineteens has been changed because of the gap from nineteens to first team, so they brought the reserves in. Yet these, like I've been flung in from a nineteens comp, which is not strong. Mm. I watch more nineteens than anybody. And the nineteens comp is probably two or three good teams, and rest just yeah. numbers. Mm. So I'm playing twenty ones, me. Luckily, I'll play yeah. reserve grade, and I'll play against. Yeah. Um, like Wigan when they have like yeah. Simon Orton playing, and yeah. like just, yeah, people that. just on that as well. I'd, You'll probably see more, Craig, because you've got younger lads, but I think these days as well, from when, obviously, when we were younger, obviously, we're in our 30s now, I think kids are kids for longer these days 100%. as well. Do you know, so 100%. you're 17, 18, 19 yeah. year olds, they are like babies still, yeah. aren't they? Do you yeah. know, they're still at home, living at home, where I moved home when I was 16, do you know what I mean? So it's, but times have changed, do you know what I mean? And like you say, you're relying on these youngsters to keep a team afloat, and it's, they're not mentally strong enough to actually do that, do you know, at this moment in time. I've got, listen, I've got Morgan Smithers at Wigan. So Morgan comes on, everyone's on about him, makes 48 tackles, don't miss. But he's in the Wigan team. Yeah, exactly. He's next to Thomas Lulawai, he's next door. He, you've got a bit of clout round you. Yeah, exactly. It's a different ball game when you're putting him in. Yeah. And it's next to, you know, players who are not that at that level yeah. or players who have not had that experience, who haven't got arm round them and saying, yeah. listen, we're going to probably win today, let's get him involved. I can feel the pressure 
from a Morgan saying it to you, maybe, you know what I mean, to, yeah. to what the lads were in the relegation battle, yeah. what, what they're feeling. So, yeah. as I say, Huddersfield are well and truly in it. Mm. And, I, and I think I said it six weeks ago, I think London are going to get out of it. I think they've got enough character to, to get out of it because mm. they, they seem to love each other, yeah. which in any team sport is a positive. If you're playing for each other, I reckon they go for a beer after the game, they stick together. I mm. think the ones who were getting in the, in the mire probably don't. Mm. That's probably you look at them and you'll think yeah. everyone and them will get in the car, they'll all go bang. They'll all be on phones to their agents. They'll all be on phones. What am I doing next? Yeah. London lads are not doing that. I promise yeah. you. I give you my word. My, the London lads are just like all together. They're actually half accepting that if they did go down, they stick together. Yeah. So there's a bit of like no pressure situation. Yeah, they've, they've got no to lose. <laughs> That's got how they see it. They want to stay. But actually, yeah. if you speak to them, they're like, oh, well, we've already recruited a bit for that if that yeah. happens. And I'm like, wow, it just sounds like everything's in place. Yeah, yeah. Whereas to Woodysfield, Wakey, UKR, Leeds, whatever, that'd be, mm. it'd be a catastrophe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were on about it the other day. If, if Leeds went out, they'd have changed comp. I know they're not allowed. But <laughs> you'd literally bank, you'd, bank, you'd, bank, you'd bankrupt the comp, wouldn't you? Surely they wouldn't. You'd bankrupt the comp. Yeah. I don't know. How would you get the 3,000 fans they take away? Mm. And the, and the sponsorship and the, what they do for the, what, what, what are Sky going to do if you rock up and say, well, yeah. here's my team's, by the way, our biggest that's it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it'd be great to see some other teams play on Sky. So I think yeah. it would probably benefit some other teams in that sense. Also but what would Sky say to you? They just say, see you later. In fact, I'd go and buy a championship. I'm yeah. not saying we'd be on Sky more, but yeah. maybe somebody yeah. else would. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird thought, that, isn't it? But um, yeah. going back to that relegation, I, I, I believe now that we've got a few teams that are all fighting for survival, but mm. it's about probably doing something something a little bit different and I'd, I'd just go back to when I played uh, played for England and we had uh, Carl Harrison was the uh, coach and at that time we sort of separate so there's England and Great Britain and sort of like totally separate unfortunately I didn't make it into Great Britain should have done but didn't quite make it but I made it into Carl Harrison's England squad mm. with Brian McDermott and the first thing he did is uh, they give us this massive manual this big manual a GB manual and just went right guys just want you to just have a quick scan through this we've all got one of these books he sees that see that bin in corner and he just launched it at the bin mm. and instantly just like that he had us and that was it we wanted to play for him no matter what and also had brian mcdermott at the same time he said we're not worrying about structures we're not worried about the direction that we're going to be going he goes what well, i want you to is just jam your line in just narrow your line in defense and so we'll get off the line and we'll smash them get in the faces mm. It's only for a couple of games. They're not going to worry about uh, going around us. We're just going to get off the line and put it on them. And um, straight away, honestly, he had us and that were it. We just went off the back of that. And we went on to have a real successful series and uh, almost beat the Kiwis at Warrington mm -hmm. before them going on to play for Great Britain. And I think that's kind of the stage we're at now where teams have to do something to be a little bit different to make a change to go and win a game. Not about performance, about just doing enough to win a game. Sean, I'm just going to pick up on something else said about everyone's focused too much on London and them winning games. Yeah. Have the teams in Super League been focusing on, ah, oh, well, London have to win. We don't have to worry till London win. Has, has that been the mentality of players, do you think? Yeah, I think it has. I think, um, obviously, when, when London beat Toronto, you know, last year in that million pound game, I think everyone thought, oh, great stuff, London is just going to go back down. Because mm -hmm. obviously, everyone would have thought if Toronto would have come up, there would have been a, a much harder team to beat. And like you said, they've, they've not read the script, have they? And fair play to them. Do you know what I mean? I think they've done brilliant. And I think it's great, like what, what Craig was touching on. They've they've had a mentality this year that maybe half them thought, well, if we go down, we go down. It doesn't really matter. Do you know, we just got to play. And I think what a lot of teams have been, oh, don't worry about us. Let's, like London will get beat. You know, they'll get beat. But the thing is, I'm going to touch on 2017, when I was at Hull K and we came up, we came through and we were playing some really good rugby. So if when we came into that middle eight, I know it's not mid late anymore, but we had confidence we were winning. Mm -hmm. And the teams at the bottom of the table, like your witnesses, your elite, they had been beaten all year. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they were get, they were down in the dump. So it's hard to to really like to spark that confidence and you know turn it around with it. Like confidence is something that you build. Mm -hmm. So like you say, I just think a lot too many teams are like oh it's okay, London will get beat again this weekend. I bet a lot of teams thought London will go over to the south of France and get beat, mm -hmm. and it's not happened. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. fair play to them. Do you know what I mean? So people need to, then again they start worrying then. And when people start worrying, that's when you know everything goes wrong on the pitch. It's listen. I've watched them all. You watched them all lately, and I don't see any nerves in London as well. I don't know if you, if everyone feels the same. I yeah. don't, but I do all the places. I feel it. Maybe because they think they've got more to lose. I don't know. And that's probably me unfair in London. I know Wardy and Lang as well, and I, 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 they're probably doing it off a one point two cap. Mm. It's what you know. What I'm like me. You Money debate ball. it every day. About, I read everyone's cap and say, well, that's awful because I look at the rotor. 
London are probably playing off 1.2, so when people are going to realise what they're actually doing, they're playing 700 grand less mm -hmm. than probably most of the other clubs. If you've got Leeds, Marquee, it could be 2.3. It's unbelievable. It's a, le you know, it's a Leicester job here. If they, if they pull this off, and fair play to them, because they've done it in a real good manner, every time they get defeated, well, they don't, they don't get two down. I don't think yeah. I've seen him make a bad speech yet. He just says, right, guys, mm -hmm. cracks a couple of jokes, we're back on. There's a nice feel about it. I'll tell you now that if I was, if you're in there, if you look at OKR, you look at Huddersfield, you look at London, let's just say it's them three. That Wakefield, uh, OKR played London. Yep. I mean, I don't, <laughs> out London, you're yeah, looking at the so biggest banana skin you've ever seen, aren't you? You're looking at that and thinking on the back of London beating Catalans yeah. at Catalans and OKR getting mullered. Yeah. Uh, oh, you saw yeah. that coming. Okay, Wakefield have been awful, haven't we? Let's be honest. Let's not beat around the bush. Wakefield have been awful for months. Old KR have looked decent. And then and then. But I think the penny dropped. I think the penny dropped. I think the Wakefield players this week, and again, I can only talk about I've been up, I went for two meetings at Wakefield. Mm. It were like, this is it, guys. This is it. Yeah. This is your big game. Mm. And if you lose this, forget about your under whatever gram you're on, forget about this, you'll all be, you know, it'll be new contracts or it'll be this. Mm. So I think they went into that and somebody actually rang me after the game and said they seemed to realise what they were playing for. Whereas mm -hmm. OKR okay, maybe were still thinking, oh, we'll be all right. <laughs> and yeah. suddenly he said their energies were just different levels. I think Tony Smith wrote about it saying they were faster than us, they ran harder than us, tackled harder than us. There was definitely a bit of it's hit the fan mm -hmm. and let's just smut about it. Sean, it must be weird for you because you're obviously playing for Leeds, try to keep them up, but Hulk is uh, right yeah. in the middle. What's it like? This must be so strange. Yeah, it is. Um, I've got a lot of good friends. You know, I've, I've, I'm good friends with them all at the club. You know, from Neil right down, and it's um, it's not good to see. But that's sport. That's sport. You know, no one's got a god given right to stay up. You know what I mean? No matter who you are. Do you know what I mean? So, it's, you've got to play for your livelihoods here. Do you know, I've I've been in that situation, Earl, as where I've, obviously Earl was a lot younger than what I was when when I got relegated and. A lot of people lost their jobs. You know what mm. I mean. We got mortgages and stuff like that. So it's it's real. It is mm. real. Do you know what I mean? And um, like you said, like Craig said, then the penny must have dropped with Wakefield. You know, and realised. You know, well, Ches has been in that situation, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a real thing. Do you know? Because even even in that million pound game, I was after when Gas O'Brien put that drop goal over, I was just like sat on the pitch thinking like someone's gonna walk out and say, "Oh, it's okay. You're still yeah. in Super League. Yeah. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll scrap it." I honestly did, and I was just like. No, they're not gonna. They're not gonna do it. And then the year after, we were playing in the championship. Mm -hmm. We were very lucky that that Neil and and Rob like fronted up, the, you know, and and kept the club together. You know, all the sponsors stuck together. But will it happen again? You don't know. Well, you don't know. Uh, Craig, let me put it to you. Three games left. The, they're all joint bottom. Are London the favourites to go down anymore? When you consider no. their form and no their chance. Running? No, if you know your rugby, you'd say London are probably going to be favourites to beat. OKR on home soil mm. on the back of last three or four week, um, and they've got Leeds and Wakefield to play. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, and, and, they're, and you yeah. know what? OKR have got to go to the Catalans, I think. Yep. Um, Hull, well, Huddersfield have Hull FC away, St Helens away, and oh. Catalans at home. <laughs> It, like I said, all kind of pressure. <laughs> what are you laughing okay. at? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, the thing is, it's not a laughing matter, is it? No, because, like Sean it. says. That's it, this nervous is very real. It's yeah. very real. Yeah. It's yeah. very Don't real. Don't laugh, you'll cry. That's how it, well, yeah. that's how it yeah. feels. Yeah. But it's not just the players as well, by the way. It's the, it's the yeah. staff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, my contract itself is Super League status. Mm -hmm. yeah. So instantly, yeah. we're all thinking, you know, we're all worrying about our yeah. jobs at the same time. And don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. I believe in the system that should be one up, one down. I do mm -hmm. think there should be things in place where it isn't just a case of, right, well, the club then can do what they want with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. there should be things in place, but I do like the one up, one down. It makes sense. And you don't have a divine right and Lund is exactly right and that is competition that is the beauty of the sport yeah. even though it just gets us uh, all a little bit worried but we're all talking about it that is what's so good about relegation mm. I mean we're talking about it as if it is a bad thing and it, it it will be for one team and it could be my team as well but that is how the sport should be played mm. in my opinion this is the beauty of sport the ups and the downs of it but it will affect quite a lot of people. Maybe something has to change there, but uh, mm. yeah, we're, we're in a tough position at the moment. And um, talk about London, they're probably more favourite to stay up because they can win games, can't they? They've yeah. done it all season. Yeah. Yeah. And they're more yeah. favourite to win a game, whereas we haven't scored a point in two home games. And the, that is a worrying thing. There's one, this is this is my way of looking at it as well, is you look at what lads are saying. OKR, if OKR went down, would, you, would Neil stay in? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say he's probably in it 
Yeah, he loves, he loves it. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah, he's looking after. Yeah, he's not getting out, is he? Yeah. Yeah. The one you'd fear is is Huddersfield, and this is not putting more pressure on at all. Mm. But Ken's probably done more for rugby in Huddersfield yeah. than any man. I mean, it should. I can't believe Statue was not up, and yeah. it should be everything about Ken. I've said this before. I've been in that situation. I own my own club. I had a year at it, and it, yeah. it, it was. It's it's awful. You're signing forty grand a month off. Just mm. he's he's a lot more by the way, and you're watching the performances and you and no one seems to think about you being lonely sat there. Ken will be in a really lonely place and be sat mm. there thinking after all this, do I want my legacy to end yeah. or it might end with a relegation battle? I, I, I you know and then now he gets drafted in. On the positive side, whoever goes down if you've got seven hundred grand on cap, that's crap. It might be the best mm. thing for yeah, club. You, yeah, you I'm can being go, honest. Yeah. That's being honest. I'd, yeah. Sometimes I'd I go, you know what? Oof. I get in there. I tell you what, clear the deck. You've got it. Get to clear the deck. Who you don't want. Well, I tell you what, we'll uh, pick up on that after a short break because we have already got through the first part of this week's show. After the break, we'll speak more about relegation and also the top five rates. We'll be right back. You've spoken and we've listened. Rugby League Back Chat is available on podcast form from all your best podcast providers. If you're on a trip down the M62 or a flight to Toronto or Toulouse, download Rugby League Back Chat for the best debate inside Rugby League. Welcome back to this week's Rugby League Back Chat from the LD Nutrition Stadium in Feverson. Don't forget you can join the conversation too on Twitter at RL Back Chat. Gents, I just want to wrap this conversation up. It was something that you brought up, Earl, about should it should the clubs be able to, you know, just do what they want afterwards. You just said there at the end, you can clear the decks, you can get rid of all your your wasted cap spend and whatnot. With relegation coming back regularly, we know it's coming back. Do we need to adjust that a little bit so the clubs can't just go whoosh and you know magic wand literally and everyone's gone, so to speak? I think so. I I, mm. I, I do believe that, especially um, we're talking about. We've talked about staff as well. It is players, and it, it does feel like you can just have a clean slate and just bin everybody off. And we talk about the ruthlessness of sports and uh, loyalty of uh, players as well, but there's got to be loyalty from clubs at the same time. Now, I'm not saying everyone should just have a contract in place. I, I do believe maybe there must be a way of doing it where you've got the opportunity as a player to take that risk on yourself. There's an element of risk when you sign for a team, you sign for X amount. If you do drop down, Maybe you do take a pay cut. It's not for me to decide that, and I think it's something that should be looked in. I don't know the exact way you could do it, but it doesn't seem right that you can just almost use it as an excuse yeah. because you could actually put yourself in a position almost where you can manipulate it so eventually you can just get rid of all the players, all the people you don't want, and just move on. It doesn't seem yeah. quite right. It's not ethical in my yeah. eyes. Can we, uh, Craig, it's, what? It's one on that, though. Let's say they invented a 10 grand severance tax free for every player that go down so oh, 20 grand bang bang yeah. that could be done just mm. needs talking about it. you could say right there's a pot there it's not done by the club chairman this mm. one's yeah. done by the rfl yeah. any player relegation who loses his full time spaces has a 20 grand tax free payment yeah. which will cover the mortgage until they get but the players have got them in that position mm. yeah. don't be too don't be too feeling sorry well, yeah, i was yeah. going to say what uh, could uh, i'm sat as ken thinking are you kidding me yeah. are you kidding me you've got me in this position then you're wanting full-time wages you want me to keep signing well it, it, there's got to be some responsibility yeah, and the is. coaches and yeah. the staff who were put in there you know it, it, it's 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 got to be you've got to be responsible for something you can't get away with you yeah. can't just a, a suggestion and you boys are in a better position to answer this than me but rather than just cut the the contracts clean and that's the clause in the contract, isn't it? That if you know it's on Super League states, as you say, could you not have it where if you went down, you you got a certain percentage wage drop, and therefore you still have a contract, you're still under contract, but 
you lose a, you lose players, part of your salary. Half a players might want to go somewhere else, don't? Yeah, please. Yeah, true, I, I suppose. Any don't feel too sorry. I'm, I'm trying to say to yes, yeah, there is yeah, yeah. situations. I think which as a terrible. player, as an agent, you could probably work that out yourselves. Are you willing to take that risk and say, look, if we do go down in my three-year contract, I'm happy to take this wage decrease because then mm. you're putting it back on the player as well. But you'll know you said if the player's good enough, he'll just jump. Mm. Trust me. You very rarely in our sport will you get somebody say, "Okay, I'll take a pay cut. I can play for this club, top four club, mm -hmm. but I'm going to stay loyal to this." That has to be, you know, they need to. If they do that, let yeah. everybody know they're doing that. Mm -hmm. I got somebody on Twitter said to me about Oliver Wilson. They said, "Oliver would have paid a big fee if we go down. Oliver's a free agent. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose all that money." Ken, you know, another one. And I said, "Well, if you know him, you, you wouldn't. I know him. Mm -hmm. Oliver would stay." And I'm speaking here, you might phone me afterwards and say, Craig, you've just set me up a gift. <laughs> but I'm trying to be honest, I would say Oliver, and me advising Oliver to be, stay Oliver, mm. because you'll get more games next year, mm. you're still building your profile mm. up, and loyalty in life pays back. Yeah. But if I've got a bloke who's 28 to Warrington or after, he won't be loyal to Huddersfield, he'll be mm. doing double somersault, saying to me, go do your job, yeah. and I'll do it. Here's one for you. Um, everyone's been thinking London's going to go down. All their players have been picked off for next year anyway. I think seven have already left. If Hull KR or Huddersfield go down, there's going to be a batch of seasoned mm. Super League players available on the market, effectively. Oh. Has, has the increased risk for Hull KR and Huddersfield changed the way clubs are recruiting for next well, London, season? Well, London would probably play off 1.2 again because they'll pinch seven players who'll take less money to go London. Mm. You know what I mean? Let's be <laughs> honest, it's easy to read it will, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. The ones who, if London, this is no offence to London, but this is how good a coaching job they're doing. The other clubs probably won't take a lot of the London lads, as in who's left. Yeah. They'll probably go, oh, because they don't, still don't, they're still disrespecting them now. Mm. They're still saying, well, they're not good enough. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Mm. These lads are absolutely good. Mm. He's either Wardian Langers are either magicians mm. or they've actually recruited well. Yeah. And that's the, the, and they won't, do you understand by that? Yeah, they're yeah, on yeah. 1.2. If it's true on cap, mm -hmm. these lads are proper money ball players. These are playing for 30, 40,000 quid. Mm. Mm. It's just amazing. And, and, and it proves that character. But yeah, Hull KR, if you look at it, I'll tell you now, say if Hull KR went down, and you'll know this to John, probably anybody above 80 grand will be thinking, wow, I'm I'm in the mire. I mean, and, and that's truthful. That's same for Wakey, that's same for Huddersfield. If you're probably below 70s, Championship will take, they'll probably say no problem. It'll be the ones who are. Now, would a Danny Again, Maguire, would a Danny Maguire, let's say they've asked Danton another year, which. Have they? About 15 times, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's actually had three phone calls from other clubs in the last thing. I'm not, I'm not going to mention the club because it's hilarious, but they rang me up and they said, we really need an half. And I said, yeah, and obviously all okay, Kara went through the biggest battle ever. And he went, I think Danny had come. And I said, what, from this year? I said, why, why, why would Danny leave all okay, KR anyway? Well, we all know that Leeds came in for him. You don't need to hide that from us. And we were Leeds, I meant And the talk, well, the talk were Warrington. Well, it was somebody else, so... It, <laughs> oh, we got him there. No, no, no. It, it's hilarious. <laughs> so, would a Danny Maguire, would, would a champ, Danny play championship? No offence, Dan's not going to play championship 36. No, get his head tucked straight in. It's not going to happen. But point, point being, anybody 70 and under, I promise you, will probably be OK. Mm -hmm. It's the ones... Who are, who are, you know it works, don't you? You know, yeah, yeah, lads in change rooms be laughing to each other, thinking, "You're gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm all right." You yeah. know, I'm not. I'm not on them wages where they can't afford yeah. me in the championship. Speaking yeah. of magicians, let's move it away from relegation. Top five, Salford Red Devils. Yeah, fifth, five wins on the bounce. They're hammering everyone. Mm. Sean, I mean, what the job Ian Watson's doing there is ridiculous, really. Yeah, I I think he's done brilliant. I really yeah. do. I think he's. Um, I watched the I watched the game against Huddersfield when you beat them over in. I think it was over Salford, wasn't it? Yep. And the first well, the first half hour they were brilliant, and then they just went. And I was mm. just like, what's going on then? And ever since then, they've, they've just changed, mm -hmm. and they've been absolutely fantastic. You know, um, Hastings is fantastic, though, isn't he? He's brilliant. Yeah. He really is, and he's he's playing some really good rugby, and they just seem to be playing well as a team again, like London. They're just. They've not got a massive squad, do you know, and they're just playing well. And playing good friend that we, we, we've we sort of um, worked with, GB. Greg yeah, Brown. GB, yeah. Um, Greg Brown, yeah. Greg Brown, he's, uh, he's got them fit. He's, mm. he's the best conditioner in that sense that I've ever had. And he was the only person that actually managed to get me some abs. Do you know what I mean? He was, uh, <laughs> yeah. he, I mean, he was that good. He got his number, he got his number I have actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that ship may have sailed, mate. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Can he work miracles? <laughs> he, he's not a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> what all right, lads, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I 
have a look at Matt then and help me out. Looks like he's lost don't, a bit. Don't <laughs> forget on me. Don't he's, forget he's on me. Got, ah, he's got away. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, honestly, GB's uh, one of the best conditions I've ever had, and he was the one that probably pushed me on to get me um, to play for England. Um, has his way of doing things. He doesn't like to deviate from it. But if he's working alongside somebody like Ian Watson, who obviously respects what he does and to get them in shape, he's got them fit, he's got them strong. And um, it, you notice there's probably less injuries there as well. You've got a small squad, you can't afford as many injuries. Yeah, I'll go back to what, what we dispute every week. Ian know. Blees also needs the, the absolute mm. thing because he's recruited unbelievable. Yeah. They've just got rid of their franchise player, Robert Louis. Mm. Carried on. Even got better. Yeah. So either Louis want that good or I'm not, you know, I'm laughing because yeah, I'm looking yeah. and thinking any other club got probably their highest paid player took away, you'd be mm. like, are you kidding me? Mm. They've done it and carried on winning, which tells you again, the group's strong, the yeah. coaches are strong. It, I reckon they're off a cap of, I reckon not far off London. Mm. I, I did some figures once and thought, you know, maybe, I, so I, whatever they're doing mm. is unbelievable. Mm. I promise you, when, when the, I've been asking for recruitment managers at clubs me for 10 years. Mm. The Aussies do it, we don't. All this begins with the Irie, I promise you. It, it's, it, in any other business, you have a buyer, you have a con you know, you have people put in places. We still let coaches go out and recruit, and he's gone in fifth. Look at Rick Stone on his field. Yeah. I want him, I want him, yeah. I want him. Yeah, you can have, oh, we're always back our coaches. Worst thing you should ever say. Yeah. Because that coach is gone and just left you with bombs. Mm -hmm. Because the new coach comes in and goes, I don't want him. You're sat with 600 grand on Cat Wadilda. Yeah. Well, that, gonna... that happened at Huddersfield, didn't it? Because Paul Anderson brought in Tom Simons, uh, Ryan Briley, and I'm sure someone else in that season. And then Rick came in, and for whatever reason, it didn't work out for any of those players. But you still. Including them. myself as well. Rick of course, got, I forgot got that. rid of me. And, uh, would, you still be, would you still be playing if you hadn't got I, rid of you? Do you know, I, I had a year left on my contract. I was never, ever going to retire. I just needed a break. And I've had a, I'd had a few injuries. I was playing with injuries um, consistently just to, trying to help the boys out of that. Out of trouble and um, I just needed a bit of a, a rest and uh, Rick came in I started to get a bit fitter again and uh, he decided to bin me off and uh, bring Shannon Waitman in um, someone who hadn't played first grade I mean I was over 400 games in um, brought him in and it didn't work out for Shannon because he probably wasn't quite at the level that he needed to be at and um, I was a bit frustrated and disappointed at the time I, I would have carried on man I genuinely wanted to play as many games as I possibly could look it's, it's mad because you look at ranking playing at Cass Mm. And he looks mm. like he's, you know, I, I didn't see the signing. I thought, why well, I've cast on that? That's me being honest. But it, fair play to Jordan. Well, they've moved into fullback though. Yeah, but it's been work, great. It? It's been yeah. great. And then yeah. you look at the lad at Warrington they got rid of. Um, Mamo. Mamo, yeah. Mamo. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke to Fitzy and then they're, they're pleased to death. Want to extend him. Yeah. Think he's fantastic. Trains well. No problem at all. So you're looking at, again, recruitment manager mm. would, have, would be at a club for 20 years, Matt. Yeah. And that whatever happens, even the coaches. It's always been like that, though, hasn't Crazy. it? Crazy. With, um, with players, coaches can make or ruin people's oh. careers. And that's how it is. It's oh, just, it's that But it's got to stop. Yeah, it's... Because it's, I'm telling you now, if you actually do your own work on it, yeah. which I spend my life like an anorak doing, yeah. it's some of the things they're doing is horrendous. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I... I spoke to Neil when I first looked at their quota and I went, lads, your cap is in a, in a it's mm. got some work to do. Yeah. You've got top heavy, you've got this, you've got it. And they didn't have a, many juniors coming through to help oh, the no, cap. Yeah. This is what, they, they don't get about Wigan. They, it mm. kills me. Say Ellens and Wigan have got yeah. probably five players playing under 20 grand. Yeah. Allowing you, when you do go and pull the trigger, go and pull it proper. Yeah. yeah. Go and don't make that mistake. As Wigan have done with Burgess and It's unbelievable. Hastings. It's just yeah. unbelievable. And, and you watch clubs every day and I just sit me in disbelief yeah. at home and I go, Oh my God. It is, it is funny that you talk about how much a team would spend on the cap, but how much is actually playing on the pitch. And you'd probably mm. say the same thing about Huddersfield. Of course you can. Saying how much are we actually playing on the pitch? That's so what I said last night. Caps on it. It's, mm. it's not, isn't it? And the, most of it is in the crowd, like you say, in the stands. And some of these players, unfortunately, they have picked up injuries. Like Uate, for instance, who just hasn't had a proper look in really because of injury, purely yeah. because of injury. But again, and if you're doing your recruiting, Earl, I don't know what your art is on, let's say he's on whatever. But you look at that and you do your own work. That's a risk with a 30, well, his age and he's had some hammer. What a fantastic player for Newcastle, mm -hmm. yardage, yardage, yardage. He's had some hammer. As a car, you'd say, bit of a risk here, son. Let's just make sure we don't tie this one up for three years because if we do, we're in the mire. Well, speaking of which, I mean, I think everyone were looking at Tui Lola here like that. He, when, when he came to, let's be honest, he was rubbish, wasn't he, at Leeds? He's gone to Salford and 
He's got him play. He's got him play that's like a, a world, journal, that's, I'm, I'm going to rollick you on that one because that's your journalist stead on saying he were rubbish. I didn't think he were that rubbish. And he were playing in a side that were. were I think rubbish. many are disagree. Yeah, with well, can I just sorry. Have you ever saw him? Yeah. One of the loveliest kids ever. Oh, I, I'm not doubting. No, no, not even on the pitch. I saw him play. I, I saw him have some very good games. He wasn't bought to take a team round the pitch. Mm -hmm. He was a flair player. So it comes back to recruitment. Jack Walker. He were probably brought in again. Jack Walker. Let's be yeah. honest, I think they brought him as a full back and then I'm thinking they've got Jack, what they've done that for, yeah. they've got Ashton Golden. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was thinking, why? He then got put a six to free run a game, not get involved. You know, he's probably on an edge trying to organise. He can't organise. Just going back to what you said about the players, you know, players don't become bad players overnight, mm -hmm. you know, and people like in rugby league, people say, oh, they call some players cats and stuff like that, you know, they're scared. There's no cat in rugby league. Rugby no league's chance. a tough sport, you know what I mean? Yeah, you might get some that are tougher than others. That's mm -hmm. just that, right? And some players can fit in with different teams. I can remember 2009, I couldn't do anything wrong, could I? No. I couldn't do anything <laughs> wrong in 2009. 2010, yeah. I was shocking because mm -hmm. Nathan wanted me to play a different way, but it wasn't my game. So whatever coach you want and they want to play to your strengths, sometimes some coaches want to get you and want to change you. 100%. But they've signed you how you've played at a different mm -hmm. club. So why not get you, bring you to the club and play? Since we've had Robbie, we've needed, like you say, Robbie and Lil here, that has been the perfect match for both sides. Where got Salford, it. they've got Hastings that are going to control everything, and Lil Lee can do what he wants. Now we've got Robbie that controls everything, mm -hmm. and now Richie's playing better, yeah. Brad's playing better, because mm -hmm. you've just got to have that good mix of players. Mm -hmm. No one's a bad player. We're mm -hmm. in that position for a reason. Mm -hmm. We're not bad players mm -hmm. overnight, we just, whether we fit a system or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been getting you to think deeper about the game, and, and you, you just, you know, you're straight in again with knee strap. I've, I've been told. <laughs> no, but he, he was he was poor in that system. Lola here didn't right, work yeah. in that system. No, you've just changed your opinion now because you just said. <laughs> oh, come on. Really listen, now let's, let's, let's get him lads. Cool. Listen, let's jump for it. He went in. He went in. He really went in. I answered that. But he did. Else lights are on. But he did. He was poor in that system. It didn't work. And to be fair, you're right. Everyone could see that Richie Mile. I think everyone agrees. He's a great supporting player. But he's not a, an organiser, he's not an orchestrator, and it was apparent that Lola here wasn't that either. So it com comes back to what you were saying about recruitment. 100%. And, and p picking the players for your system. And he you should know. speak to the coach, and the coach should say, I, I, have, I, would, I would have a rule, this is what I've said to a couple of Super League clubs, I'd have a rule. The coach can stop a player coming mm. if he said, I definitely don't want him, but he better, he better have some good reasons. Mm -hmm. What you don't want is, oh, what, what they do in our sport. Well, Charlie said uh, he did this wrong when he was three. Uh, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Or the, the scout who says, I say, oh, scout, how many players he brought through? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he don't get his players wrong in Frank. Who's Frank? He's never got a player in his life. So I say, come on. So there should be appraisals. There should be appraisals done. Mm -hmm. There should be everything. When you say no, you don't want a player, everybody should be accountable. Recruitment meetings should be once a week. Yeah. And the coach should be involved and his staff should be involved and the statsman should be involved. Mm -hmm. All responsible. And, mm -hmm. and if you say no, so if I say to Sean, he's my coach, Sean, I want to bring in this player. And Sean goes, mm, don't fancy him. Mm. I'm going to say, go on then, you tell, tell me why. Me why. Yeah. You tell me why, and if you justify to me, we'll go with it, because you're going to have that call. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to get away with this saying no, without just mm. saying, I don't fancy him, mm. which we do in our sport, it's awful, isn't it? Yeah. Too many people, too many players are being bought off YouTube. It's unbelievable. I swear, yeah. I swear oh, well, watch the highlights off YouTube. It's fantastic, we yeah. need to get him, yeah. get him over. Absolutely awful. We've had a few of those signings. I don't want to mention names because we were that bad. No. We don't even deserve to have a mention in the uh, Super League. Well, wrap it up there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna have to wrap it up there because we need to go to a break. I've, be, I've just been given a grilling, so I definitely need a chance to calm down. <laughs> we'll be back for the final part of this week's Rugby League Back Chat after a short break. back to the final part of this week's Rugby League back chat. We're going to throw straight in because we've got loads to talk about yet. Challenge Cup, in fact, we haven't mentioned it yet. 
Uh, Earl, Challenge Cup finalist, say it's going to be stopped or not? Uh, no. Okay, nah. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> they're just too strong though, yeah. honestly. They're, they're another level. Saints yeah. are another level. That's why we don't talk about them. Yeah. We don't talk about the top of the league because it's boring. How it's bad become is it? that mundane. How bad is it that we're saying that? I, I agree with you. Isn't it a shame that we've got a team that are that good and we're saying it's mundane and boring? <laughs> because, but it's just because of that. Good. Not the way they play. No, 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 like, no I'm not yeah, taking no, any way no, from, no, anything no, away no. from them because they are far superior. They're playing absolutely brilliant. Mm. It's a great story in itself. There's more exciting moments. Not exciting games. Mm. Just It's just more exciting to talk about that bottom of the league because of relegation. Yeah. But since they're unbelievable at the moment and it's great to see mm -hmm. um, but I think teams are miles off them. I mean, Warrington have, have dropped off as well and that's the worrying thing about Warrington it. Warrington are only two points clear of in playoff positions now. Uh, is that going to be a distraction for Rugby them? league at least I'll have to tell you better than me. I'll tell you now one thing Warrington have got in the favour when you're that bad you're usually going to you can come back Maybe and I think that could happen. Point, yeah. It's not a bad speech. For, you've, the, the coach needs tools to work with. Trust mm. me. The bad, the bad. <laughs> the last five week performances, he'll have some tools this week to go with. He'll be going bang, lads. They're writing you off. Saints could get a bit, you know. Complacent. So that'll be uh, JP always does it to me. He'll always go. He love that. They're throwing mud at us, and you, you want to go, you want to go. Well, they'll have it all week. There, they'll be building up yeah. to pull off, which is now going to be a shock. Mm -hmm. Saint Helens will actually sit there, and it, that's probably in worst position. So I'm. Going to go against the lads, I think it'll be a lot closer than we think. I, I think Warrington will give them hell. Any doubt that Blake Austin won't play, Sean? No, I think he'll play. You, no. you, you can't miss an opportunity to you know, play in the Challenge Cup final. Just mm -hmm. going back to what Craig said about what JP used, like, I can remember 2012 you know, when I went to Leeds from Huddersfield on loan and we went to Huddersfield. I went, oh, I'll play that game, but I think you beat us like 40 0. Mm -hmm. And then we went on to win the grand final. Unbelievable. You know, so yeah, I can't remember you can it. change it. Like, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's good because you. Do you know the like St. Helens? I've played against them three times yeah. this year, twice a whole cat, mm -hmm. and obviously the last game. And they're just strong, powerful, and mm -hmm. fast. Every mm -hmm. player, even the youngsters, honestly, I was tackling, I was like, God, what are these lads eating? Do you know that they are? They're so strong, do you know? Mm -hmm. But then you can get complacent, do you know? Because you sat at the top. We did it 2013. We won the league. We were up at the top. And you sometimes you think you just got to turn up. Yeah. They've not played at Wembley for the last, what, since 2008, I think it was? Last 11 years, yeah. 11 years. Mm -hmm. Warrington have been there. You know, they've yeah. been there, done it. They've, la they've lost a couple of grand finals. So, th like, and there's no, there's there's nothing more dangerous than a wounded animal, is there? You would think about this. So I was sat thinking on Friday, the play if you were playing a week before a Challenge Cup, who is the one team you don't want to play? Wigan. No. Well, Everybody. Yeah. Every well, player in the country would go, no, yeah. that is the worst shift in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. Rain, it's a rainy night. It's in what, I'm thinking, I bet Wigan, I can just see Wigan you know, that culture. Come on, yeah. these don't fancy. Let's yeah, whack them early. Yeah, yeah. Warrington have probably got in and thinking, this is like being let with a pack of hyenas. Oh. They, they drilled him at first 20. I thought yeah. Philpin for Warrington had a right dig. He were firing him, yeah, but it was so hard. Listen, that they'll be, they'll be ready. They'll be ready. It'll be a different game. I'm telling you, it'll be closed. There'll be a lot of points and it'll be a close game. Saints losing to Catalan, wasn't it, last, last, last year? year. Yeah. It was that yeah. the semis? Semi. And yeah. they got absolutely dominated. Absolutely dominated. Physically dominated. They got mm. run over the top of. And it's because Catalan saw an opportunity. You know, Saints were flying high at that point. They were fantastic. No one was going to beat them. Catalan just put one over them. Physically got up for it, barred up and went for it. And uh, that that's something Warrington could do. Yeah. Again, on our clubs are running on sound like an anna. it rushy unbelievable i'm telling you as an agent you go in you say a couple of players and he'll go sorry uh, we've uh, we've highlighted a kid at 17. Mm -hmm. so unless you want to take a one year you're not coming to our club and you're like all right and at first as an agent you think oh my god but yeah. actually everything's pre-planned well it's yeah. working somebody it? somebody told me about grace the winger so i watched him in the 19s this is not offense to he, he had a lot of mistakes and he had a lot they've allowed him to make mistakes mm -hmm. in first grade Mm -hmm. They've allowed him and said, okay, all right, we know you, yeah. this, we know that, they know yeah, we yeah. targeting and keep going. Now you've got an, you've probably got an international top winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look, you watch what how they run it as a club. You mm -hmm. watch how they do it. It is it's, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I love it because they give the kids a chance without judging them. I have some clubs, I'm not gonna mention them. One game, one game, fish up, bang, kids on his knees. 
Oh my God, I've made two mistakes. Well, yeah. I'll make a mistake on 15 grand. What about his mistakes on 120? Yeah. Not your will, by the way. I know you got more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> <As, laughs> over three years, yeah. mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just going on that, though, with, yeah, yeah. with Saints, I think it was when Nathan Brown took over, and I think it was 2013, they had a load of injuries and they blooded a load of youngsters. Mm. And do you know what? Nathan just persevered with, I think, the following year, 2014, they won the, yeah. they won the grand final, didn't they? You're and right. just going back to that, the, the, you've got to persevere sometimes. Times with Leeds, yeah, we've got a lot of youngsters coming through, right? But they're giving them a shot. Do you know what? Two, three years down oh. the line, they're going to be massive from yeah, that. You've got yeah, young Ash, sure. Ash Hanley that's flying. He's, yeah. he's a joint top scorer. You know what I mean? You've got Sutty, you've got Wacker at the back. Great players, Harry Newman, fantastic players. Yeah. Mikelai, Cameron, he's Mikel, just Yeah, keeping, and just all rolling. the youngsters coming through as well. Do you know, that's what the top teams can do. Yeah. Because going back to that, though, mm. when you're blooding them youngsters, You've got a lot of old heads to bring them through. You're not putting them all in together. Do you yeah, know what I mean? They don't all often play together. at the same time. Though, exactly. Do they? Yeah. You drop got a few it. in at a time. If you, if you, you put, one or, two, swap them put one or two in at a time, 100%. you can hide them. Yeah, and yeah. and that's when people think, oh, he's going to be the next best. But it's not that. It's because he's, he's playing against like, maybe like your Sean O'Loughlin. Like they, they make the tackles for him. Do you know yeah, what I mean? And yeah, they cover yeah. up for him. Whereas when you've got five or six playing together, no, can, and, the, and sometimes it's a whole edge. Mm. So when when you're playing against me, all right, well, which edge are we going to attack? The one that's got like Jermaine McGilvery on this play for England and stuff. Like, oh, you're going to go the other side. That's sort of how you how we you call think it. When the, you're going the, into it. the Undertaker role is a right edge. You mm. know, well, let's be honest. Art ball goes to the left. You have to defend a lot on right. Yeah. If you're on right, you probably kick chase. And I come, but I've got a young lad at Cask, to, a gold at Toyo. Well, I think a bit yeah. about. Got a mistake in him too. He's learning. He's twenty. And I come bring bringing me and saying, oh, they're playing Wigan on Sky. And I'm thinking, Wigan, Wigan's edge there. I'm thinking, Kildare, Greenwood, yeah. George Williams. And yeah. I saw you playing inside. He told me that. And then he told me outside. Now I'm thinking, I think I text Gailey and went, oh, I'm, I'm going, come on, T, we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. within 20 minutes, I, I, it, it was like some of. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it were picked up and we, yeah. it were all, you know, that that's when it's a bad to you look yeah. and you think that's a necessity they've had to play him. Yeah. yeah. And he's played at centre, where, you know, and all that. But back to things, trust me, St. Helens are a fantastic run club against, probably, yeah. let's be honest, the Man City of our game. You know, mm. Warrington are the, these lads will tell you, when Warrington come to town, it's usually the eye rollers are here. The, yeah, that, yeah. the team talks, usually they're meant for each other with Warrington. They can mm. go and get a cap player, mm. fits his revolutionising rugby league with his marketing. He's, he, they, they, yeah, you know, yeah. they're, bringing it, they're bringing a different mm. spin. He's already started on his Challenge Cup thing, have you seen it? They're yeah, already rolling yeah, all yeah, the videos, yeah, yeah. the tape, he'll get them at it. So I think it'll be, we need for the game mm -hmm. a massive Challenge Cup. Here's mm. the thing, just on Saints quickly, Sean. Great team, amazing team under Justin Orbrook. They haven't won any, a major trophy yet. Do they need to win a Challenge Cup or a Grand Final to go down as one of the great Super League teams of its era. Yeah, they, oh, definitely. Mm. Yeah, like you said, they've not they've not been in Challenge Cup final for so long. And Saints, I was a massive Saints supporter as a kid. I loved them. You know, Kieran mm. Cunningham was my idol. They used to go to Wembley and used to win it all the time, mm. all the time. I think mm. they won it about, about five them, times out of seven years or something yeah. like that. They won it. They just they were unbelievable. And going back last year, like to the Catalan game in the semi final, I think that's probably put them in good stead. This that's why I don't think they'll get beat. Because yeah. I think they're just going to be relentless at the weekend. They, mm. They've had that, you know. They've had the slip up, yeah. and they've done it um, coming into the um, the grand final as well. They got beat, didn't they? They didn't get to the grand final. Beat by last Warrington. Year. Yeah. Got beat by Warrington. So I think sometimes a loss is as good as a win. Sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. if you use it properly, you know, the following year they always say you got to lose one to win one, don't yeah. they? So it does put some. It does some put some pressure on them though. What we're does. saying that they need mm. to win that major trophy. They they're here now. This is the first major final they've had. Didn't Nathan, they thought, I thought, thought Nathan won it the year right? Yeah, they did. They won yeah, it in but, 2014. But this, is, but this is what I mean is the new under Hall, yeah, yeah, yeah. this, this, new, this team yeah. they've got together, this yeah. is the first chance to win a major trophy. The isn't best it? position ever for them in that sense mm, as well. Yeah. You look at their injury, injury list. I don't, I don't even know if they've got an injury list. No, do you know what I mean? They, they never seem to have injuries. They just don't, do they? Well, they've got Millsy. We've both worked with Millsy, the physio. He's unbelievable. Do you know what? You got to go to the backroom staff as well. A lot mm. of people praise the players. It's not. It's the physios. It's the mm -hmm. strength conditions that keep you on the pitch. Yeah. You know, sometimes you come in after a game, especially us older heads. You don't need to train. Mm. You just need to get fit for the game. That mm. we get paid to win games to play. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, so if you've got a, a physio or a, a condition that just wants you to train all the time, or a coach who says, "I want him training," and he's not having a, a day off today. Sometimes it's not about Crazy. that, it's about yeah, yeah. just doing getting them ready. During week. Yeah, doing mean, contact. The same, with, yeah. Humans, the same with the young ones. The young ones need more throwing at them. I used to go mad with the club and say, you've got kids doing the same as what the 31 year olds mm. doing. Yeah, yeah. A young lad needs something throwing at him. Get yeah. him doing skills in the afternoon. Yeah. Get him yeah. at it because if you leave them, because you're protecting 10 legs, 
10 players' legs, they're, yeah. then they're missing loads. But we need a massive Challenge Cup map tra- telling yeah. I don't know how many people are yeah. going. I think yeah. it will we missed, we missed I think the. It'll... I love the. We were all brought up. If somebody said to me rugby league, I'd say Challenge Cup. Yeah. That's yeah. how yeah. I see it. We've lost that. A bit like football at FA Cup. Yeah. We've lost a bit of the romance. Yeah. We've lo- lost a bit of the coach, you know, and the and the, and the the camera going on and the crack and every all the families turning up and you'd all know each other. And yeah. I used to love it from Doncaster. They used to have coach loads and they'd go on mm. and they'd meet. They'd be, but they would, it would done from the pubs, to be honest. I mean, in yeah. the day, it would yeah, all yeah. done from pubs. They organised it. Everybody would have a coach going up. You've just mentioned there about Saints dominating. And, yeah. then, and then a potential banana skin. Cast for the best team. 100%. When Leeds beat them that day, I will never. I still go back. I tell Danny, you must be a genius. So you, you, you prove probably you are. Mm. Because that t- cast team beat them about four times mm. by 50. Yeah, I were there and I was stood there. Yeah, they were playing yeah. with them. Mm. And, and I'll, tell a, I'll tell a little one. This is true. Mm. Gailey rings me on Tuesday. He, he, one of my best mates. So he's like, I hope it's windy, son. That young Jack Walker's going to get some hammer. And I'm like, uh-uh, the, maybe not gaily white. I said he doesn't suffer nerves. He's, he's I'm not going to say do well, but Jack does not have any nerves Jack, in his body. Jack, you know such it, yeah, I know. So I, it, yeah. He, 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 you know, I know him. So, he, so he's, he's, I said he doesn't suffer nerves. Anyway, on the day of the game, I can see what's going to happen. Cass are going to throw it about, but I'm looking at rain. Mm. I call it Danny's dance floor. It's Leeds' it's dance floor. It's where they dance yeah. best. Mm. And then Wack rings me. And I pick phone up and I'm thinking, I'm going to see, I'm going to back to give him one of my team talks. What lads will tell you, boring as <laughs> hell. So I'm like, he went, here, can you get Danny to give me a lift? <laughs> I, went, you, I, I, gave big, I went, you kidding? He went, no, no, he said, I had an organised lift to get on bus. That's what he was stressed about. I said, <laughs> I felt like texting Gailey going, game on. <laughs> Don't put a bum up. <laughs> yeah. He has got no oh, nerves in that body. Really? He's just going to play no, as he sees it. Yeah, and like I said, I haven't played with him. He, he is, he's just so cool. But <laughs> going back to the Challenge Cup, I can. Uh, there's, there's nothing more demoralising as a player and as a fan. When you watch the Challenge Cup on TV and you see empty seats, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. they were awful. Like, last year, I think it was was it 2015 when I think Leeds put 50 on us, 50 yeah. now I think it was, and there was just when we played in 2009, how good was that when we played Warrior? And I think it was like 76, 76 yeah. thousand there. It was absolutely oh. pumping, you know. I think it was the first time Warrior got there, mm. first time. Oh no, you. Well, yeah, we, we played back at Wembley because you yeah, was yeah, it yeah, at Twickenham when you got beat, That's right. and it was it was amazing. It is. But yeah. It's just sort of. Do you know what I, I mean? Agree with you. I agree like when you when you watch it and there's hardly any fans, you just think that's the challenge cup final. Like you say, yeah. growing up as a kid, yeah. looking at that, that was amazing. That was like it was sacred to play there. Yeah. And it's just I would this is me, just a quick one. I, I would I, I'd look at it. If it drops below 65, so whatever we get, mm-hmm. numbers are always whatever you yeah. look at them. Mm-hmm. If there is plenty of bench seats, I'd be I'd be taking it to a, a lesser facility. And that's my opinion. I know it. Listen, I all dream about Wembley, but that's not the same if, Wembley I were dreaming yeah, about, by the way. I've, we, I've done yeah. last eight Challenge Cups. Yeah, you're yeah. very far from pitch. You're not yeah. the old one. Yeah, that yeah. walk, it were like your dreamland. Yeah. All I'm saying is an option because what we don't want to see, London is nailed it. You don't want to see 15,000 empty seats. Because no. that's a disgrace. And I, yeah, our games bad. looked looks all bad, over yeah. the world and we've yeah. got empty yeah. seats for a final occasion. If, if we had more than two and a half minutes left, we'd go on to that debate. However, Sean, I've got to bring up uh, something that you're doing. HQ9. Yep. Yep. Uh, you've been going for a while now. Have you had a bit of a break? Bringing it back. Just explain to us what it is, because I, I think this is fantastic. I'm sure you'll love yeah, it. Yeah, all, all it is is that I was I found it very hard to break into the, the rugby league. As you'll know yourself, rugby league's predominantly M62 yeah, corridor. Do you know? And if you're not in that M62 corridor, it's very hard to break in. And you again, you'll know um, players they can come from all shapes and sizes, Mike, do you know what I mean? Davis has yeah. come, come through Coventry. Uh, yeah, exactly. Up London, now it's <laughs> exactly, and, and I was I just found it so hard to break in. So I was at, I was at St. Helens as a scholarship, went to Castleford for two years, um, got told I wasn't good enough and then went to work and I was there for three years. And um, I, I got Young Player of the Year twice um, and then the third year, I think I scored like 17 tries in... I think I'd, I'd sang her at Donny that year, you can't remember. I met oh, you really? call. Because yeah, yeah. Rob was there, wasn't I had, Rob? I had Andy, Lace, Andy I, Ellis. And I, I was trying to get Andy Ellis on you because she was Oh, really? Up. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, right, we've got, we've got 90 seconds. Of, well, so right, so, I, so I, made, I made a DVD yeah. and I sent it to Huddersfield yeah. and then they signed me on a free year deal. So mm-hmm. all it is, it's for people all around England or all around the world that aren't in the shop window. Go on there, make your profile, you get clubs on board and they can showcase themselves. And even for, for people like yourself, no, for... Um, for managers to come and get them and then they can represent them because a lot of them say we need a manager. So in essence you put in a 
they can set their own profile up, so, put, yeah. put like a high light reel on or whatever, and yeah. all the clubs will use it and pick out. Oh, we might have a look at him. That's yeah. basically what you're trying. And it's to good do. for clubs because we don't have the we don't have the funds to have all like in football. They have about 20, 30 you know scouts all around yeah. the world. We don't have that, so they can sit at home and they, they can look all over the country. Mm -hmm. So what? That's it's, I mean it's live now, isn't it? But you yeah, just, it's live now. We're, we're, we're relaunching it on the first of September, doing like yeah. a big campaign for it. Yeah, and if and if everyone. Just wants to sign up it's quite simple isn't it just yeah just, the web, just the go website. on the website and um, hq9.co.uk yeah. and then everything's there nice and simple to you we just had a brand new website so it's mm. nice and easy craig has the pound size running through his head he can see i like it, new I like it. Yeah. and he's right he's right i get sent loads of videos of, yeah. of lads every day so if you've got a platform you can go to and say you can get in contact with an agent mm -hmm. on their agent should be doing it as well it's fantastic yeah. i agree right gents well we've run out of time i can't believe it that went very very quickly big thanks to my guests this week earl crabtree sean lunt and craig harrison don't forget you can join the conversation too on twitter at rl backchat big thanks to everyone enjoy the challenge cup final and most of all enjoy your rugby league we'll see you for next week's edition of rugby league backchat